Uh, and I mentioned Rookie of the Year, and this was obviously before Chet got hurt in Summer League, but on June 24th of last year, the odds on DraftKings for Rookie of the Year, Paulo was at plus 300, Jabari Smith was at plus 350, Chet was at plus 475. The current odds for Paulo to win Rookie of the Year are minus 475. I mean, 52% of the bets are on him. The most money on him, he's actually got... The next closest guy is Benedict Matherin of the Pacers uh, in terms of total money bet. So clearly the front runner. And on top of the numbers, the counting stats, you could make an argument. The Magic are one of the most fun teams to watch. I think your tweet the other day, Tommy, you said they're the most interesting 8-20 and 20 team in the NBA. They're now 11-20 after and this they keep weekend. Winning. And they keep winning. What do you think makes them, I have my reasons, but what do you think makes them so interesting to watch, even though they're not, and they, they will be the first ones to admit this, they're not always good. Yes. But what makes them so interesting? So I'll start with Paulo. Uh, number one pick, uh, clearly a guy that has lived up to expectations. And you think about last night, yesterday's game, I guess it was an afternoon game in Boston, yesterday's game, first Magic rookie to ever have 30 points and six three-pointers in a game. He was the first guy to go 25-5 and five in his NBA debut since LeBron. Um, so he's fun to watch every night. And it's fun watching really talented players early in their career in real time sort of figure shit out on the fly. That's really fun. Franz Wagner, that to me, uh, his development this year He's a stud. Paulo actually says some amazing things about him in this interview. We'll we'll wait for you to hear that. But I love him. Bull bull. Bull bull. <laughs> it seems like every night has some crazy play. Um, his body control at his size and length. Uh, it's just that's fun to watch. Um, I and truthfully, he's missed a lot of time, but they've actually been a good basketball team. Not just a fun, bad basketball team. They've been a good basketball team with Wendell Carter Jr. on the floor. And as he gets healthy, gets more integrated to the lineup, it's, you know, at some point, they're going to put a team out with five really good basketball players. Now, can they win? I don't know. Well, I'm missing Jalen Suggs still. Who I think will be when he comes back will will be helpful for them and is still so young. You know we don't we we don't know what his ceiling is yet. The other person I wanted to bring up who we talk about a little bit with Paolo, who's your boy, who I think has made a a real impact for them. He's only he only got back on November thirtieth. Is Markel Fultz and even uh, in Sunday's game against uh, the Celtics, you know his his stats weren't great, but at the end of the game, <laughs> that's the guy who's getting their offensive rebounds. The guy diving on the floor. That's the guy who is kind of like making second chance plays happen. Uh, a, I mean, obviously you're happy for him. You know, he's a great person. We've had him on the show and everything like that. But like, what do you think his impact is just as a, we were joking about him being their vet, but he is their vet. Yeah. What do you think his impact is for this team? Because it doesn't feel to me like a coincidence that they've had this win streak since he's been back. I would always say as his teammate, and we would talk about this with the Sixers guys, like he just moves differently. There's an unpredictability to his movement patterns. He's shifty at one point. He's explosive at another point. He's kind of awkward sometimes when he gets into some of his crazier dribble packages. Like he just keeps you off guard so he can break down a defense, even though he can't, he still can't shoot threes, but his mid range has looked really good at times this year. I remember going into my second year when Philly said, We're going to start Markel over you. We need him to develop, um, which you know I had no problem with, whatever. That's all good. Um, but I remember Billy Lang, who was one of our assistant coaches, I remember him telling me, Markel has the chance to be special defensively. And that, to me, is where I see him making a really big impact for the Orlando Magic this season. It's been, yeah, he, you know, he scored the ball, he's rebounded, and he's gotten assists, but it's his defense. He makes plays and he guards... Uh, at a really high level, and and that's impressive to me. By the way, Tommy, we kind of brought th brought this up with Paulo, and I looked it up this morning on uh, on DraftKings. Like Orlando, uh, like a lot of teams this year, uh, Orlando was one of the teams that everybody assumed was going to tank for Webmediana. We are now thirty one games into their season; they're just two and a half games back of the play in game. And I think about their team and their roster. 
how good would it be for their development? Because they already have talent. How good it would it be for their development to get the opportunity to play in a high-pressure play-in game, to go down the stretch of the regular season in March, in April, and actually be playing meaningful basketball with high intensity? That to, There's value in that. Now, the flip side of that is there's value in Wemed Yama, but there's value in that. And the Magic currently are at plus 800 for the play-in game. They started the season over under for wins on DraftKings, 25 and a half. I, unless they absolutely shut these talented players down, there's no way they don't cover that. Here's my question for you. They beat the Celtics twice this weekend. Obviously, they're not beating the Celtics in a playoff series. I'm not saying Once without that, Tatum. Tatum was yes, out there yesterday. Yeah, yeah. But obviously, not beating the Celtics in a playoff series. But what I, my question is, if they were somehow to get into a play-in game, find themselves in some sort of playoff situation, is there something about their size, like the way that they are built as a team, where they 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 feel like a unique matchup problem for certain teams, where they are they just feel a little unpredictable to me in terms of like it's not like there's one guy you got to lock down. I mean, it may be Paolo by the end of the year, but it's like there's one guy you got to lock down, and that's it with them. It's that they are they're throwing a lot of shit at the wall, and they're kind of seeing what works. And I don't know. I, I think that there's a. I think they. I think they are scary in a lot of ways. Um, as a team, you kind of, you just kind of don't really want to have them coming into town. If that makes sense. It makes sense from your vantage point. There's no way they're winning a playoff series. <laughs> like what? What are you they might even win a couple talking games about? I know they you're being positive. Games. What are you talking they about? Couple, they might win a couple games. What in are a you talking series? about? No, we'll see. We'll no. See. So we'll they see. get the play-in game and they get the seven or eight seed and they've got the Bucks, the we'll Celtics, see. or the Cavs, the or the Nets. I, I love the, get I the love fuck the out of here. <laughs> get the fuck out of here. We'll see. Let's check back in two months when they. When I throw down on the NBA action, it's got to be with DraftKings Sportsbook an official sports betting partner of the NBA. Download the app now to get in on the Holiday Hoops action. Right now, all customers can sign up with code JJ, opt in, and place any bet on any NBA Christmas Day game. And if your bet loses, you'll get a free bet back. Only at DraftKings Sportsbook with code JJ. Minimum age and eligibility restrictions apply. See show notes for details.